Welcome to our express service here at Reve Church. We're so glad you guys are here. Yeah, today's gonna be powerful. Let's jump right in. Relationships are complicated. A week before Shannon and I got married, we went to some friends of ours wedding and we were so excited to uh, celebrate them on their big day. So we got all dressed up. We go to the wedding. We attend the ceremony. After the ceremony, we go to the reception. Obviously, at every good wedding reception, there is dancing. Well, it came time to dance, and I don't know what it was about that particular night. I don't know if it was the mood. I don't know if it was the food, but I did not want to dance. Now, here's something that you need to know. My wife, on one hand, uh, she likes to dance. She is a good dancer, and she has rhythm. On the other hand, I do not love to dance. I'm not a very good dancer, and I don't have rhythm. But I don't know what it was about this particular night. I didn't even want to dance at all, okay? But my wife, she was, she was like, come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. And I just kept on saying no. This was so upsetting to Shannon that we left the wedding. We, we left that night abruptly. I was taking her to drop her off at her house. And, and as I'm dropping her off, she hands me back her engagement ring. And she says, you don't want to dance with me? I don't want to marry you. And it was, it was like, we're, I'm out. And so I did what any grown man would do in that situation. I begged. I got on my hands and knees. I begged. I pleaded my case. I asked her to forgive me. And we, we made it. We made it. Okay. We, we, uh, we survived. We got married that following week. But how many of you know that relationships are complicated? Well, today, as we continue our series, Missing Peace, we get another clue. We get another clue to where to, where to find peace. And uh, if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Romans chapter 12 and verse 18, and, and it says this. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with some people. Uh, that's, that's, wait a minute. Uh, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with people that you generally like. Now that, I keep on getting this wrong. Let me read it again. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. With everyone, Todd, with everyone. I didn't, I didn't make this up. This is, this is what the writer says here in Romans 12, 18. Live at peace with everyone. With my neighbor that smokes weed all the time. With my ex. With the boss that fired me. Everyone. At, like work hard at this. Put all your effort into this. At living at peace with everyone. In fact, Jesus would, would go on to, someone asked him once, like, hey, what, what's the most important things that we should be doing, uh, Jesus? Like, what's the most important commandment? And Jesus said, listen, here's the most, the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. And love others, love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is reminiscent of the golden rule in Matthew 7. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. In other words, modern day translation, Jesus is saying relationships are super important. They're super important to God and they should be super important to us. Now today we're continuing this collection called Missing Peace. And, and this series is leading us all the way up to Christmas Eve. Now we are having a Christmas Eve service this year right here at the Performing Arts Center. So we want to invite you. This is a great time to invite a friend. Uh, maybe a coworker. Uh, we're going to have a Christmas experience for kids. We're going to have a candlelight experience for uh, the adult service. And so uh, you definitely want to check that out. 4.30 on Christmas Eve. And this, this series, uh, Missing Peace, is leading us uh, all the way up to uh, Christmas. And, and what we've seen over the past two years during this uh, pandemic is we've seen anxiety and depression and suicide on the rise. And I actually had a friend in the height of the pandemic last year 
take his own life. And maybe more than ever in, in, in history, uh, we're in a place as a human race to, that we're looking for peace. We're trying to find peace. But a lot of times, many of us, we are missing peace. What the Bible says, though, is so hopeful to us. It's so helpful to us because the Bible says that there's a peace that is available to you and to me that, that goes beyond understanding. It's a peace that this world cannot offer us. It's a peace that does not correlate with our circumstances. It's a peace that is a God peace. It's a whole peace. It's a complete peace that is really a peace with God. It's a peace with others. It's an inner peace with, within myself. This peace is, is available uh, to, to us today, right now. It's awesome, but, but the, the way that we access this peace is not through transcendental meditation. We don't access peace through yoga. We don't get peace through a pill. The Bible says that the peace that we're all looking for, the peace that we're all missing, is found in a person. And we see this in Isaiah 9 and verse 6. It says this. This is a, a very famous Christmas verse. This was written hundreds of years before Jesus. But it says this. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulders. And these will be his royal titles. Wonderful. Counselor. Everlasting Father. And Prince of Peace. I, I love what... Pastor Erwin McManus says, uh, he said once, he, he said, uh, there will be no world peace until we have inner peace. And there will be no inner peace until we meet the Prince of Peace. You see, peace comes through a person, and that person, his name is Jesus. Now, there's a secret that you need to know about the Phelps family. Okay, is this a safe place? I'm just asking, I'm just, just wondering. Okay, is this a safe place? All right. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a secret you need to know. All right, and I know we live in California. Listen, please forgive me. But uh, there's a secret at the Phelps home, okay? So on occasion, sometimes our family, we will use disposable place. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Forgive me. We, we, we on occasion, sometimes we use disposable place. Now, I don't know if that makes us rednecks. My family, when, uh, when I was born, they moved from Iowa to South Carolina. In South Carolina, there are more rednecks than people. I, I might be one. I don't know. But, but we do have real plates, okay? I, maybe that's what differentiates between a redneck and a, you know, regular person, right? Like, we have real plates. We have salad plates. We have bowls. We have dinner plates. We have all kinds of real plates. But on occasion, sometimes, we use disposable plates. And you know why, right? I mean, it's just easy. When I say sometimes on occasion, like every day, pretty much, okay? Um, they're, they're easier. Like, you don't have to clean them. You don't have to wash them. You don't have to use a dishwasher as much. Sometimes we use disposable plates. And sometimes, on occasion, we treat relationships like they're disposable. Sometimes in our lives, we treat people we, we, we sometimes use them and we dispose of them. That's a, that's a friendship. That's a, sometimes there are marriages. Sometimes we treat our relationships like they're disposable. We just, we just use them and we, and we kind of toss them away. So here's the question. Why do we do this? Why do we do this? I was thinking about this, and I'm like, what, why? why? Why do sometimes I treat relationships in my life like they are disposable? And it's connected to what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, 
and verse 9. This is what Jesus says. This is the Sermon on the Mount. This is a beatitude. And Jesus says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. In other words, what, what Jesus is saying is, listen, when you become a follower of Jesus, you get this peace. You get this peace that goes beyond understanding. You, goes, you get a peace that goes beyond your particular circumstance. You get a peace that this world cannot offer you. And when you get that peace, now Jesus is saying, I want to send you out and I want to make you a peacemaker in all of your relationships. I want you to be a peacemaker. Here's the challenge. Instead of being peacemakers, we become fence builders. Well, Todd, what, what, what is that? What, what is that? Well, being a fence builder is just, it's just human nature. Right? And instead of doing what Jesus said, I, go and be a peacemaker. Make peace with everyone. Be a peacemaker in all of your relationships. We become fence builders. And we build fences in our life of offense. We build a, a, a fence in our life of rejection. And we build a fence in our life of contempt. But see, Jesus, Jesus didn't say and command us to be fence builders. Jesus never said, hey, when, when someone offends you, I really, just, just hold on to it. And build a fence of offense. Jesus didn't say that. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Now go and make peace. Like put all that you have into being a peacemaker in your relationships, in your life. So in the future, I'm going to buy, I'm going to get a Jeep Wrangler. And so what, what have I done? I have Googled Jeeps. I've uh, YouTubed Jeeps. Uh, I've researched Jeeps. I... I, I look on social media for Jeeps. And so what this has done is uh, now when I'm, when I'm out and about, uh, I will see Jeeps. I see Jeeps everywhere. I'm actually surrounded by Jeeps all the time. I, I, I figured out just the other day that my neighbor drives a Jeep. I had no idea. My next door neighbor owns a Jeep. And, and I was driving home the other day and, and I saw a Jeep. And, and then I went to Trader Joe's and, and there were several Jeeps uh, outside of Trader Joe's, did, did uh, everyone just all of a sudden go out and buy a Jeep? What, 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 what just happened? No. I trained my brain to look for Jeeps. And it's called a frequency illusion. I think that there's like all these Jeeps out there now, but they're really, the, it's the same amount <laughs> of Jeeps. And this is so important because this connects to uh, the first week of a missing piece when we introduce this next verse in Isaiah 26 and verse 3. And it says this, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast. So this verse is a, is a promise. It's God offering us that perfect peace with a condition, with a responsibility. God's saying, I've got this perfect peace for you, but your mind has to be steadfast. And, and what we understand from that verse and what it means is that we have to think truthful thoughts. That's a part of what that means, that I keep my mind steadfast when I think truthful thoughts. Now, the Bible doesn't talk a lot about positive thinking, but it talks a lot about truthful thinking that we have to keep our minds fixed on what is true. And so there's, a, there's an exercise that we can all do, right? So when we're thinking about different things, uh, we can do this exercise. We can, we can uh, if we are questioning a, a particular thought, we can draw that thought out and we can examine it almost like a, 
a court of law. And we can say, is that thought true? I did this the other day um, when I was thinking about someone and uh, I drew that thought out and I said, is that, tr is that thought true? No, it's not. That's not, not a true thought. If it's not true, I'm not going to think about it because if I don't think about those things and I keep my mind fixed and steadfast on truth, then I get to access peace. Right? And this connects to offense. Right? Offense. Because sometimes, uh, almost like I've trained my mind to look for offense, like I train my mind to look for Jeeps. Um, I, I can, in, in sometimes, almost subconsciously, I can train my mind and, and I, can, I can see offense all over the place when really it's a frequency illusion. It's not like people are offending me or there's offense all around. It's just a frequency illusion. And, and so how, how does this play out in real life? Well, well uh, th that person uh, didn't respond to my text. And so I got offended. And did that person really mean to offend me with not responding to that, <laughs> to that text? Probably not. Well, I saw on social media there's a party, and I didn't get invited to that party. I couldn't go anyway, but I didn't get invited. That offends me. Well, did that person really intentionally not invite me to that party? Probably not. But here's the deal. Even if, even if, the, even if that person intentionally did not respond to me, even if that person did intentionally did not invite me to that party. The greater truth, the greater truth is God invites me. God loves me. God includes me. You see, I have to fix my mind on what is true. And sometimes, sometimes I can create this frequency illusion in my mind. I can train my mind to look for offense. And so I just, I, I begin building a fence out of a fence. And when I do that, I, I make relationships just disposable. And I dispose of that one. I dispose of that one. And here's the the truth, I know we want to get better at this. I want to get better at this. You want to get better at this. Jesus wants to help. And so what I want to do for the rest of our time is I, I want to uh, give you some peacemaking 101. I want to give you some handles to help us live out what Jesus is saying. Hey, I want you to be a peacemaker in all of your relationships. I don't want you to be a fence builder. And so how do we do this? Well, here's, here's the first. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. Uh, peacemakers, peacemakers create unity. This is just a simple handle. Peacemakers create unity. Look at this next verse, Ephesians 4 and verse 3. It says this, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Peacemakers create unity. Uh, notice what this verse does not say. The verse does not say make every effort to let people know your political views. It doesn't say that. The verse actually does not say make every effort to let people know that you are anti-vax or for it. Doesn't say that. Notice what this verse does not say. It does not say, make every effort to let people know how stupid they are if they disagree with whatever position you hold. 
No, let, let, let me read the verse again. The verse says, make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. You see, unity is, is so powerful uh, because of our differences. And, and, and unity doesn't mean agreement. Unity means that we bring our differences. Of course we have political, different political views. Of course we come from different backgrounds and different experiences. But it is not our politics that unites us. It is not our policy that unites us. It is Christ that unites us. And this is what's so powerful about unity is that we can bring our differences, we can bring our different backgrounds, and we can come together under the banner of Christ. We have unity in Jesus. You see, peacemakers, they work at, they are intentional at, they put a lot of effort into creating unity. That's first. Number two, peacemakers protect relationships. Peacemakers don't, they don't, they don't dispose of relationships. That's not what Jesus was about. No, peacemakers, they, they protect at all costs relationships, knowing that the relationships are the most valuable thing that we have. Peacemakers protect relationships. Let me give you some handles on, on how we can do this. Number one, a peacemaker uh, tells the truth in love. Let me ask you this. Uh, have you ever had a conversation with someone and you felt the love, but he, you didn't really feel the truth? That's called flattery. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and you felt the truth, but you didn't really feel the love? You see, peacemakers, they, they combine the two. They're, they're not opposites. They actually complement each other. We speak the truth in love. Ephesians 4 and verse 15 says this, Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. When Shannon and I first got the dream, the vision to start Rev A Church, this was back in 2000. And 17, we, we took that little small, little baby, you know, idea, little tiny dream, and we went to our pastor and we told him about it. We said, hey, we really feel called and, and we're so excited and, and, uh, to, to uh, start a life-giving church in Southern California. And, and we were so pumped about it. And so when we told him, he was not as excited as we were. And his response was, uh, that's going to be re really hard. That's going to be difficult. That might be the hardest thing that you've ever done in your life. And he said, I will help coach you through the process. You see what my pastor did? He spoke truth. It's going to be hard. Facts. Facts. And I will help you. Love. See, peacemakers, they protect the relationship by speaking truth in love. Number two, peacemakers, they apologize when they are wrong. How many relationships could we protect if we just apologized when we were wrong? How many marriages could we restore if we just apologized when we're wrong? Uh, I, I told Shannon, I I'm sorry, I was wrong. I should have danced. See, peacemakers apologize. They, they humble themselves and they apologize when they're wrong, they use very specific things like, 
I should have danced with you, babe. I am sorry. I am an idiot. Please forgive me. Take me back. I'm begging you. <laughs> See, peacemakers apologize when we're wrong. We, we, we use very specific things. We, we apologize for, for those things, that, and we restore and we protect the relationship. Number three, peacemakers forgive and let go. Now, when I say that, some of you, you want to punch me. You want to throw something at me. You're like, you're like Todd, you, you don't know what he said. You don't know what he did. You don't know what happened. I don't. But I do know that if we're going to experience the peace that passes understanding, if we're going to experience the peace that God promises to us, then we have to forgive and we have to let go and we have to protect those relationships. You know, when COVID-19 hit last year, March of 2020, uh, all of our small groups went virtual. And so my men's group, for example, was online for many months. And so uh, this was during the time uh, of the George Floyd murder uh, video that went viral and was causing riots and, and, and uh, protests all over the world. And so when that was happening, our men's group, we, we had a conversation about that. So I had a bunch of guys in, in that group, and, and we're, we're, we're bringing up this topic of racial, reconcil racial reconciliation and racial injustice. And Derek, uh, who's African-American, he was in my group, and uh, there were some other guys, and, but there was a, a, a white guy in, in the group. And, and uh, as we were having this conversation, the white guy said something insensitive that offended Derek, and it created conflict. Now, what these, what these guys could have done is they could have ignored it. They could have pretended like it didn't happen. Or they could have just disposed of the relationship. But they didn't. They went to lunch. The white guy apologized to Derek and he restored the relationship. He said, I was wrong. Do you forgive me? And, and, and they reconciled what was going on. They're creating unity. They're protecting the relationship. They were becoming peacemakers. Hey, let me pray for us as we close. God, thank you so much for uh, this moment. God, I thank you for that person watching right now. And uh, I just pray that, that you would um, help them and help us, God, to live this out, to become the peacemaker that you have called us to be, to uh, bring peace into a very conflicted world. And um, God, I, I, I do pray that your Holy Spirit would empower us uh, to, to live this way. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.